Hey, Internet friends, it's Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative and the Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got someone online, and his name is Cleet, and it's Bulock. He gave me some uh, a way to pronounce it. It's Bulock. Cleet Bulock. You there, Cleet? That's correct. Wonderful. Glad so, to be on your show. Where are you located? I'm Cleet? located west of Atlanta in a uh, nice golf okay. course community. Okay. I'm enjoying my retirement and... Um, writing my books and trying to make a difference in public education and in human relations. Well, I'm up in Minnesota, and if you've been watching the news, you know that we're buried yeah. up here for some crazy reason. It's kind of weird. April showers bring May flowers, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so are you married and got kids and all that kind of stuff, or are you single oh, yeah. and wild and crazy? kids, seven grandkids. Woo! <laughs> uh, life is good. So now, from looking at some of the information about you, you, you teach, correct? You're a professor? I was. You're I, re I retired in 03 and began writing my book. Got it. I got it first published in 08, and the latest version came out in October of this year. Uh, now two books on how to improve schools. And, and part of your stuff is on behavior, right? At my Degree is in social psychology. Yeah. And that's how individuals behave in a group. So human relations is at the heart of both of my books. Uh, it's the human relations that occur between teachers and students yeah. and teachers and the administration that is causing all the problems. Uh, that's why test scores are low. They're trying to correct test scores with curriculum, and it doesn't work. Uh, right, because I think curriculum is kind of like a robotic kind of thing, and every individual is at different levels. So if you kind of plug somebody that's an A student into something that's A level, it's going to work. But if you put somebody that's a D student in there, that's probably not going to work. Right? Amen. And not to get controversial, but uh, teaching people this behavioral thing, I think that would help a lot with this crazy shooting thing that some people are saying, you know, laws, laws, laws. But criminals don't abide by laws. But I think through training and teaching and psychology, you can shift people's thinking so they wouldn't do something crazy like that. Yeah, Maybe. shooters, um, every individual has five basic needs. That's you and me. Mm -hmm. We've all got the same basic needs. Maslow? Each person a little different, but we still have the same basic needs. What happens with these shooters is their needs are not being met, mm -hmm. and they have to get them met. So let me run through those five basic needs. Okay? okay, sure. They go back. The philosophers have been discussing this since the 18th century. Why do people behave the way they do? And they came up with the first one was, well, it's life. They want to be alive. They want to be free of stress. They want to be free of fear and anxiety. That's why they behave the way they do. And the next guy comes along and he says, oh, yeah, that's true. But it's happiness. People behave the way they do because they want to be happy. And life with no happiness is no life. Of course, you can't be happy all the time, but you need moments of happiness in your life. And so the next guy comes along, and his name was Nietzsche, a uh, famous philosopher in the late 19th century. Sure. Uh, he's also an agnostic. And he said, yeah, you're right. Life and happiness are important needs, but there is a greater need. He says it's power. People want to have power. And in my book, I talk about that as control. Power gives you control. Right. Chapter four in book one identifies the nine forms of power that are used by people to gain control. Five of those forms are freeing forms and four are controlling forms. And I don't know if we'll I have time to get into that or not. But um, if you think about what's going on in the government with President Trump, it's all about control, right? Uh, control of the media, control of the press, control with Congress, and of course Congress wants control. People want the cabinet, people below him, uh, and Comey. Uh, all of that stuff with control. It's a very big issue. And if you think about uh, the Paris Climate Accord, uh, North Korea and on and on with control as the issues with Syria and Assad. It's all about control. Sure. And different forms of power are used to control people. 
So, uh, so when someone else is controlling, the other person is sort of out of control, which can lead to some frustration and want to kind of go up the next rung. And one of the crazy things is the more you try to control people, the more they tend to resist. Sure. <laughs> and in the schools today, many kids come to school and they're over controlled. They, they are told what the rules are. They're told what to study. They must do exactly what they're told to do or they get in trouble. They're over controlled and they resist. Instead of being motivated, they resist. So they should be maybe motivated and guided as opposed to directed. Yeah. Oh. There's a way you can give people. The mantra throughout my books is leadership is, to, is how to give control to people without giving it up. That's the mark of a true leader, giving control to others without giving it up. When they don't do what they're supposed to do, you take control back. As a parent, for example, you, you have control. One of the forms of power is position power. A parent has position power. With position power, you get the right to uh, control them. But if you control them and don't give them control, they're going to resist and buck right. you. So as a parent, you give control to your kids, and when they don't do what they're supposed to do, you take it back. If, if you think... Uh, a leader who does not take control back is going to lose the ability to lead. Okay. Got so it. you come to the fourth need and you jump in here anytime you want. Um, if you want to, you know, ex expand on something or from your own background. Which I was going to say for, before the, you go into the fourth, it's, it's kind of like instead of um, stopping the kid from being in control, you give them a little control, and if they don't quite do it the right way, you kind of guide them a little bit. And then the, the reality there, I guess, is what if this, this child does something miraculously good, and if you wouldn't have given him that opportunity, he would have never attempted it. So Amen. Rele releasing a little bit of control so that the, guy, the kid can get out of the cage. You know? That's correct. You have to train kids to be responsible and make decisions. If you always control them, they don't get the opportunities to do that. One of the problems in our schools is we don't give the kids control. Right. I, I have found a way to give the kids control in the classroom without giving it up. And I, <clears throat> the typical situation in a classroom, Brad, if a kid misbehaves, what do the other kids do? They look to the teacher to see what the teacher's going to do to control the misbehavior, right? Sure. Okay. What if the kids took control? Sort what of a democratic teacher... response, yeah. sort of a voting kind of deal, or even a, I, a scoring I system. Used to, when I was a teacher, if I didn't feel good, I went to the kids and I said, hey, guys, I don't feel very good today. How about helping me out? And they took control. Right. They took control of their own behavior, and they loved it. Even well, some, some kind of incentive program, like if they were late for class all the time, if you just give them some kind of incentive for being there on time, they'd probably remedy the situation. Yeah. yeah. Here's the, here's the easy way to give them control without giving it up. You say, hey, guys, I tell you what, I've had to correct your behavior on average 10 times every day. I'm getting tired of that. I tell you what, if we get that to seven, I'll give you an extra five minutes of recess. They said, what? You give us an extra five minutes? Yeah, I'll give you an extra five minutes of recess. Right. They jump all over it for that extra five minutes of recess. Because then they're in control of getting that extra five minutes. Yeah. Which could make a quantum leap yeah. in, uh, in, in teaching. It does. And uh, <clears throat> so the fourth need, we can come back to that if you want. I don't your listeners are probably more interested in human relations they, than they are about schools, aren't they? Well, I think it's kind of it starts at the beginning, and that that would be a nice thing to be able to have this world a better place because the kids grow up to, you know, be responsible and be able to uh, grow and instead of yeah. shooting each other. I call this the citizenship school because we're teaching kids how to behave, how to help each other, how to cooperate. The schools today are so competitive rather than cooperative. Right. 12 years of being a good citizen, of helping each other and working together, uh, turns out an entirely different student. Today's students that we turn out are self-serving. They have a what's in it for me mentality. Exactly. And our leaders have a what's in it for me mentality. Uh, and our politicians are self-serving. 
Well, we're um, in this transactional kind of thing. Like I give you money, you give me coffee, and it's just yeah. very short sighted. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> the fourth need that you have and I have is caring. What if it were like, what would it be like to wake up one morning and realize that nobody cared about you as a person? Yeah, does that sort of also fall into like acknowledgement? Yeah. I think because that's something that I crave from my childhood. I, you don't have to give me money or a reward or a pat on the back. Just let, let me know that you know that I did it. Yeah, yeah. there you go. So caring is, a, is an important need. So you've got life itself. You've got happiness, you've got control, and you've got caring, and then you come along with the fifth need. Mm -hmm. Rick Warren, uh, Dr. Oz, the Dalai Lama, all state purpose is an important need in life. Life with no purpose is no life. Many kids go to school with no purpose. Right, they're just kind of getting through it. Their purpose is to just get the diploma or graduate, and they don't even want to do that, right? Yeah, they don't. Many kids don't even care about that. I, I asked... You know, you asked uh, about life events. I had two significant life events. One was the contract to evaluate every school district in the state of West Virginia. So for five months, all I did was drive around and interview students and teachers about their schools. And I would ask the question, what do you like about your school? And they said, the teachers. And I says, what don't you like about your school? And they said, the teachers. And I says, oh, well, that's interesting. Tell me about that. And they says, well, some of these teachers care about us, uh, they treat us, they want us to learn, they will do anything to help us. And then you've got these other teachers and all they want is their paycheck. They can't wait for retirement. They come in, put their feet up on their desk with their cup of coffee and they look at us and they say, hey guys, I'm your teacher. If you're here to learn, I'm going to be teaching, we're going to get along just fine. If you don't care to learn, that's your problem. They don't care about us. Right. And then I asked the... Uh, the teachers, what do you like about your school? And they said, the parents. And I said, what don't you like about your school? And they said, the parents. I said, well, tell me about that. <laughs> they said, well, you know, some of these parents will do anything in the world for us. And then you've got these other parents. They don't care about us. They work against us. The, the, everything we do to teach these kids, try to get these kids to be model citizens, they undo when they get home. So... <clears throat> After five months of going around getting all this information, I said, I've got to write a book where kids are going to like to go to school and teachers are going to like to go to school and parents are going to be involved. So chapter five in book one describes how to get the parents on your side and get them involved. Uh, I, <clears throat> I've, this has worked in one school district and it worked beautifully. Uh, the new superintendent didn't like the fact that I was a significant figure in that school district because he was losing control. Yeah. So he got rid of it. He got rid of the program. Oh. On it. So you've got these five needs. These are what many kids going to school don't. Their needs aren't. Are those, are those five needs the chapters of your book? Uh Yes. That sounded like it. Cool. Each one is not a chapter. Each chapter deals with the five needs. Okay. Uh, when, when you give kids control of the other student's behavior in a classroom, you stop bullying behavior because when a bully does something in the bathroom or in the hallway, the other kids will step in. Got it. And the most in every, and I'm there on my website, there is a, a survey on bullying behavior. It is free to any school district out there that wants to measure bullying behavior in their school. Well, let's let's get to that before I ask my favorite uh, final question. How do we get your book and how? what's the uh, URL for your uh, website? Oh, it's on Amazon.com and Barnes and & Noble. And it's uh, called? You can just put my name in, Bulock and School Culture and School Climate, and the book should come up. And the title of the book? School Culture and Climate, Vis-a-Vis -vis Student Learning. And the other one is called uh, Enhancing School Culture. And Do you happen to have one there you can hold up? Sure. Cool. That'll okay. help. A little graphic image. Mm. Perfect. Here are the two books. They run about $25 a piece. Lift them up a little bit. There yeah. we go. Oh, nice, glossy, shiny covers. Very good. Uh, All righty. Perfect. Thank you. The first book describes how to create the school. 
how to give the kids control. It describes the how to get their needs met. It describes um, the nine forms of power. It describes a program to get the parents involved in. So it's a four phase process. Uh, and each chapter takes you through one phase. Okay. <clears throat> and then how do we how do you get to your website? Uh, w West GA West Georgia West GA dot edu front slash tilt that little squealy up in the left hand corner of the keyboard and yep. see view off and it, it'll take you right there. Okay. The books are on there. You can just click on them and order them right from my website. Perfect. If you want to, maybe if you could send that to me in a messenger on LinkedIn or something, and I will embed that onto the video when I put it out to the world. But now I want to ask my final and favorite question. So real quick, why? Why are you doing this as a, whoops, that's supposed to, that's not supposed to happen. Well, when I, when I went around to all these schools and interviewed, <clears throat> I thought there's got to be a way to create a school where kids are going to like to go to school, where parents are going to be involved, where teachers don't quit in year three through five, uh, because a lot of teachers don't like going to school. We're getting okay. some feedback. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of an internet connection. So we got most of the information on, but uh, so. It's sounding to me like you got into this because you were in this school system. You saw some problems, some things that were not working. So you figured out a way of making it working and then got into this as your, this is sort of your retirement project, right? Yeah, this is it. You know, I'll be on this until I quit. Um, <laughs> okay. And I'll never retire. I'll retire the day I die. I'm the same way. I'm not going to quit. This is retirement. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Well, Cleet, I appreciate you taking the time to be on Synergy Cafe, and uh, if you want to stick on, we'll talk a little further. Other than that, I'm going to sign this one off and beam it up to the universe, and we'll uh, see who can find it. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Peace. Thank you.